What do you think, once classes get going here in the fall, what do you think the biggest challenge will be to maintain the, the academy? The biggest challenge is building a culture. It's just like whether it's in sports or whether it's in life, establishing a culture of excellence that will be second to none. And certain parameters are things that you're just not, certain parameters are things that you're just not going to tolerate. This is how it's going to be. These are the rules. These are the expectations. This is what we need from you. Are you in? A commitment, a team effort. We care about you. We want to see you have success in your life. We want to educate you. But now, are you in? Once they buy in, that's the goal. Okay. Uh, one last question for me before we open it up to our audience here. Uh, will there be a basketball team? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there will be a basketball team. We're going to allow our students to kind of choose our after-school programs and activities and sporting um, situations, but basketball, I think, will be one of them. So I'll say yes to that. So there's a, there's a good chance we might find the next Jalen Rose at Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. Possibly. You never know. But just know, I care more about their GPAs than their points per game. Okay. Now, um, I'd like to open it up to the audience. If you guys have any questions for Jalen about, about anything, feel free to ask. Does he need this? Do I need the mic? All right, Jalen, it's an honor to talk to you, sir. Um, you. I watch you every chance I get on ESPN, so I just wanted to know, what's it like to work for a big name corporation like that? It's fantastic. A lot of people didn't realize that in college, mass communications was my major, radio, TV, film. So I'm one of the people that's just lucky enough to be able to work for his major. And to be able to work for a company like ESPN, a worldwide leader, means a lot for me because it's not just basketball. They don't just use me as a basketball analyst. They allow me to do multimedia type things, and that allows you to grow in the broadcasting field. It allows you to be versatile, and they have a, a standard of excellence, a standard of professionalism that you must adhere to because they have another million people on the other line that are willing to take your job and to do what they, they're asked of. So it's, it, it's a lot of pressure, but I welcome it. Jalen, it's really exciting to hear the news that you're going to spearhead this academy in the fall. What's, what's the biggest expectation that you might see coming out of this one year, two years, four years, eight years down the line? There are a lot of great educators in the state of Michigan. You know, a lot of people that are sacrificing their time, their energy, um, their influence on today's youth that are doing a fantastic job. And there are a lot of students that are not only grasping that information, but doing what they can to be successful. But there are a lot of situations that are just the opposite. There are a lot of poor educators. There are a lot of crappy schools. So we're trying to provide an alternative for that. And the goal is really life success. Yes, we want to teach science and math and English and do what we can to make sure the kids are educated, but also life skills, social skills, and the things that they really need beyond the classroom to have an opportunity to win in life. Jalen, it, it is very exciting to be partnering with you here. You know, University of Detroit Mercy and definitely the, our Department in Education is excited about that. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, after school programs and, you, of course, basketball. Have you thought about what other sort of programs you might have in an extended day? That's going to be up to our kids. You know, a lot of times when you have a charter school, you don't want to force feed the activities. Mm -hmm. So we can't just go to the students and say, these are the five things we're going to do. We want them to be invested in that. And when they decide these are the teams that they want, these are the activities that they would like to have, then that's what we're going to implement. <coughs> I'm sorry I'm fighting the cold. <coughs> Excuse me. No, not really. Um, you mentioned how they're going to be going to school year-round. What are they going to be doing in the summer? Um, basically, the great thing about our school is we're going to have, it's not going to be like an a 8 to 3 school day. It's going to be an 8 to 6 school day. It's not going to be a school that ends in June. It's going to be a school that is open to the community, but also open to our students 
to have that window of learning also from when June through August. You have the opportunity to learn. There are no excuses. Like, we want to eliminate that part of it. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to have the best teachers. We're going to do the best we can to put you in a position to have success. Are you in? Do you really want this? And once they buy in, that's when it's up to us, it's up to myself to make sure that they're exposed to all of those opportunities. Jalen, I know how important it is for you to give back to the community that raised you and, and made you help make you the success that you are. How will you help the students in the school to do that? How will you help them seek out into the community and become productive members? There have been a lot of productive members of the city of Detroit or the Detroit metropolitan area and then they take that success and they go elsewhere. We're going to try to keep that home, um, whether it's students, whether it's teachers, whatever, whatever type of job, career, uh, we want that to hopefully stay home. Obviously, it's a big world out there and go influence it as much as you can. But that's one of my big steps is to let them know that I'm here. I'm going to be an anchor in the community. And uh, you have the opportunity to not only chase your success, but also be an anchor in the community. Hi, uh, Javen. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a rumor that uh, you're going to be on campus for the first full week of school. You know, school starts the first day after Labor Day. Is there any truth to that rumor? A lot of truth to that rumor. <laughs> The great, the great thing about my job at ESPN is it uh, really allows me to have the opportunity and time to juggle this because I technically go to Bristol and do ESPN television work 10 to 12 days a month. So besides being there, I'm going to be here at the school. So whether it's talking to kids, what's going on with your family, what's going on with your classes, um, playing basketball for so long, if I'm able to play in an arena and I can spot a guy that's heckling me out of 20,000 people, I'm pretty sure out of 500 kids, I get a chance to know each one of them, know their <laughs> names, remember their names, understands what's going on in their life, because that's important. Kids just want to understand that you care about them and that you don't have any hidden agenda, and that's where I come in. So yes, I'll be there. <laughs> Uh, Jalen, uh, I'm a communications major, and uh, after I get done playing basketball, I would like to uh, do something like you. I was just curious to how you got uh, to ESPN and got that career going in your life. Well, the great thing about um, multimedia nowadays is everywhere. You know, you have multiple outlets, local, whether it's ABCs, NBC, ABC, and then you have Fox, you have ESPN, you have TNT, you have NBA TV. You have so many different outlets that if you're really serious about getting into it, the opportunity is there. And it all, it's all about what type of media you want to do. Do you want to do sideline? Do you want to do studio? Do you want to be an analyst? Do you want to be um, a writer? There are so many opportunities in the field of communications to take advantage of that uh, you could definitely get into it. And it's a great thing. Like, it keeps you current. It keeps you in the game. Um, it puts you on TV. And uh, really gives you a voice. Like, one thing about being a player is you get a chance to play for two hours and people get a chance to appreciate your exploits on the court. But that's a short window. The one thing about working in the media, you could do that for 30, 40 years. And the longevity can also be there. And it springboards to so many different careers. Like you see so many people that work in the media that end up doing other things, like in sports, whether it's become a coach, become a general manager. Um, so it, it springboards into so many opportunities. It pays well, too. 